Well, we know there's gold here, but the pieces seem to be really small. So come on, let's try and find some of the good stuff. So we start off today by going sniping and I wanted to show you what I look for when I'm under the water and first of all here I'm drawn to all them plum coloured stones, the iron stones, the hematite because they are heavy and wherever I see them it means other things that are heavy are going to come to rest. So this looked like a likely place to start searching and I never expect to waft gravels around and then you see a piece of gold appear in front of my eyes. It doesn't seem to quite work like that. You've normally got to get rid of all the overburden first and get right down. So here is a combination of using the suction pump, using my hands to move the gravels around, and sometimes picking up the larger rocks. And I also tend to sluice all these gravels as well, so these will be collected and put in a bucket. But if you look carefully to the lower left corner of the screen, you'll start to see the purple and the plum coloured stones, the hematites and the heavies appear. They're normally just resting on the bedrock itself. And there will be fine gold mixed up in all of this overburden here. We just won't see it with your eyes. Now here I've actually got to the bottom and I've cleared out all the way down to the bedrock. One of the best places to find any gold, any bigger pieces of gold, will be here in these cracks. And because gold is lazy, it doesn't like to travel very far. And once it finds a place to come to rest in these nooks and crannies, that'll be it. It will not want to move there for a long, long time. It'll normally get lodged in, and then all the other finer materials that come down the river, the sediments, they'll latch on and almost cement it into place. So it's always worth scraping out all of these small channels. The bedrock in this area is from the Ordovician period, which is around 449 million to 458 million years ago. It's marine in origin, made up of sedimentary layers, which is where you'll see the mudstones, the siltstones and the black shales. Nearby there's also a basalt lava pillow of igneous bedrock formation. And another interesting fact is that there's volcanic dikes that cut through the whole of this region. Now this was a classic example of some large boulders that have been lodged in there well and truly and that's why you need a good pinch bar and you're looking for the keystone that will be the key to releasing the lock that they all have on each other and that's a nice looking piece of mineralised rock there. The other piece will come back to that later but that's the bit I'm interested in now is that really nice pasty sediment. Again, on this occasion, I couldn't see any gold in there, but I was noticing the brown and the plum coloured iron stones again. There was also much more lead in this area. And there's quite a strong flow in the burn here, so as I scrape away, the lighter materials, as you can see, they just move away. And the heavier materials, the heavy pieces, they're not moving too far at all. You can also see the colour there of the rock where it's been covered in that layer. It looks very clean. So it was time to move this larger stone next. 
and again you've got some larger pebbles lodged in there with a sediment layer. You've just got to be patient and work it all away. I didn't see any gold here either but it was a really good sign and you've always got that feeling of intrepidation and excitement. And the white pieces that you can see, that will be lead. Now on this section I'd moved further on downstream and I was actually at the bottom of a ledge so this is like a shelf on the bedrock and the water was cascading over my head basically and just look how much lead there was there and now this was a perfect catchment area for anything that was heavy. Again I'm looking around at the iron stones, the hematites, the lead shots all collecting there but I couldn't see that elusive gold nugget. So just to give you an idea of what I'm looking for that there is a classic example where gold could come to rest or get lodged. So I just carefully use the yellow snuffer bottle to pick up all the pieces I can see and anything else that was lodged in there. I will also use my main suction pump and basically clean the whole area out. The idea of sniping though is to find the gold where it rests and to pick it up with your hands. Now that piece of lead was lodged in there and it wasn't coming out. Now this shot gives you an idea of the depth of the water. It's probably about one and a half to two feet deep. There's some good flow and I found a nice little pocket here. It's a little crevice in the bedrock with lots of pebbles that have all been lodged in there. The moment that they go over that top rock they'll just drop into that and it's almost like there's been a magnet turned on and they'll just stay there and the layers will just keep building up and building up over time. So with the scraping tool the aim is to move everything away, peel all the layers back and again you're hoping to see a piece of gold at the bottom of something there. Now that was a nice looking crevice. But what I did, like I said before, I cleaned everything out with a suction pump. And this is where I think I actually found that piece of gold. There was something that did catch my eye, and again in the shallow depth of water, my eyesight's not very good. If I'm too close to the subject, I can't actually focus on it. So that's why I just suck everything up, put it in the bucket, and sluice it later on. But anyway, let's get topside and have a chat at the side of the river. Well, I've just been sniping downstream down there. Everything looked really good. It was really nice to be under the water. The sun on my back, scraping away, thinking, yes, this looks pretty good. Have a look at the lead. Lead shot everywhere. That's just come straight out of the yellow snuffer bottle. Oops, I just disturbed the sluice. That might be a speck of gold there. Well, let's just pause the frame there for a moment. There's a piece of gold that I'd not noticed on the top mat. And from here, it stands out a mile. I actually thought it was a piece of lead. But we'll come back to that later. But yeah, welcome to the world of lead shot. And I've got quite a bucket there of gravels from when I was clearing the overburden, so Let's run that through, see what's in there. So 
So we'll run the sluice nice and gentle. And there's lots and lots of that hematite stuff. You can see it underwater, all that red, sort of brownie material. It's full of it. Wherever you get that, you get the lead and you should get the gold. We'll just run these through now, just very gently. Okay, well I've had my dinner, let's go and get down here, see how that sluice is doing, see how much lead we've found. Careful down here now. Oh. Yep, nearly there. Okay. Welcome to base camp again. Well, here's the sluice and I can see a reasonable speck of gold on the top mat, mixed in with all that lead. There's something there that is catching my eye. Maybe something there and possibly there. So let's go and do a clean up. Look at all that lead. What's that there? That looks. What's that? Is that? Is that a piece of gold? That feels quite heavy. I think that's a picker. Oh, 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 oh. Now I did see something sparkling, so I got the big suction pump out. Look at that. Wow. That's a beauty. Wow. I'm just kind of getting used to what I've just found here. That's what it's about. Whoa. -ho -ho. I thought it was a piece of lead. Well, get in there. Nice one. Can't believe it. What I was about to say was just look at all that lead shot. And then I could see that piece there and I thought that's a funny colour. There's only one colour that we know and that's gold. Look at it, it doesn't move, does it? It stays there all the time. That was the piece I was actually interested in there, that little diddy speck there. I knew there were a couple on the top mat. There they are there. So when we're always raving about 
finding um, a speck of gold. You know. That's the, that's the level we've got at. Pretty consistently and you think, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that's okay. We've got gold in the pan. And then when you're into it a bit better, that's what you expect to see. And I do know that the guys up north of Tindrum, they'll probably chuck them back. Because from what I'm hearing, they're having fantastic days up there. So anyway, I'm just so over the moon about that. So what I think we'll do, we'll, um, we'll clean these bits out. We'll separate the lead from the gold. And we'll show you in a bit more detail. So there's all the lead. So if you're following the line where the lead is and the hematite, you should be onto the gold. And there's the diddy pieces I did see. And there is that final one. Look at that in the sunlight. Some color. That's an amazing piece. Beautifully colorful. And for a noise. How's that? I'll just show you where I've decided to go working. I've gone back to the spot I was at the other day. So, I've been working along this bedrock channel here. Interesting. Have a look here. We have got some mineralization going on. Albeit it's pretty clean and white. It's not the dirty kind of what you'd expect to see the good stuff in. But all these little areas here are potential catchment places for gold when this river's in big flood. And um, we're on the inside slightly now. It's turned across from one side to the other. And we did find a few specks there. So it's always worth going over it and cleaning it a bit more. I've hit a pocket of clay under there now, so I'm having to take my time and break it down. Because if there is gold, it'll want to get stuck in there. You see there, lovely grey clay. feel this thing's mixed up in it. Right, that's three quarters full. Let's get it processed through the sluice.
So we've got lead shot there, spec over there. That's a spec, 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 a few specs here. So it is working all right on that bedrock. The sluice is running really nicely. I could listen to this all day long. Now we've just got a nice piece of gold appeared there and it's moved down so I'm having it. It's better off being in there. That's a piece there as well. We'll have that one. A piece there. We'll have that one. And that one. So that's all the lead now from that final clean up from working that crevice. And we'll have a look in there for the bits of gold next. Not forgetting, we've snuffed a few up already. Just a sneak preview there. We've got about 20 specks in there. It's nothing epic, but it'll add up with the other pieces that, don't forget, we've already put in the snuffer bottle from that run. Right, well that's me done. I've had a cracking day today, sniping, sluicing, working the crevices, and I found a wee little nugget. So anyway, we'll get back home, take some photographs, and see how it all looks in the pan at the end of the day. But if you like these videos, let me know and I'll make some more for you. And thank you for watching. Until the next time, people. Well, that was another great day at the river, and I finally found that elusive nugget. Yeah, it was a small piece, but what a piece it was. It actually came in at 0.365 grams. So we now know that there's bigger gold here to be found, but it's taken us quite a while to find the piece that size. Anyway, if you like these videos, let me know, and I'll make some more for you. And thank you for watching. Look at all that lead. What's that there? That looks. What's that? Is that? Is that a piece of gold? That feels quite heavy. I think that's a picker. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. That's a beauty. I thought it was a piece of lead. Well, get in there. Nice one. Can't believe it.